Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to answer some questions from a viewer of another video I did on MATLAB uh, data file import. And uh, at the same time, tell you a, a little different way to import data files and specifically importing uh, ASCII data files. So let's go ahead and get started. In a previous video, I told you how to import a CSV file using the XLS read function. On that video, Valerie asks, I'm importing a CSV file, but I'm using XLS read. So what gives? And the answer is that Excel uh, reads CSV files. In fact, you can save most Excel files as a CSV file. Uh, you just lose the formatting that you have in your Excel file. So uh, you can open any CSV file in Excel as well. Um, and XLS read works just fine with uh, CSV files. And, uh, but there's other ways that we can import a CSV file or other uh, types of delimited files such as tab delimited or uh, space delimited files. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. So Valerie was kind enough to send me a CSV file to use in this uh, video. And, and so I have it opened up in a text editor here. I'm on a Mac, uh, but if you were on Windows, you could open up a CSV file in Notepad, for example, and see the raw unformatted data. And what CSV stands for is comma separated value. And you see that's exactly what we have here. We have, uh, it looks like uh, one, two, three columns of data. Uh, and each value is separated by a, a comma. And uh, but I'll, I'll give you a little tip right here. Um, MATLAB doesn't like non, uh, not a number uh, values. So, so values that are words or uh, maybe even the blanks, uh, I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, but MATLAB isn't going to like these, uh, these first lines here. Uh, it might throw up when we try to import that. So we're going to skip those rows when we do the import. You see there's one, two, three, four. Uh, so we'll want to start on uh, row five here. Um, just, just keep that in mind. If you have that, you can open the file in a text editor uh, and, uh, and, and see that. Um, and uh, so yeah, so just be aware that if you've got headers in your files, Sometimes MATLAB will deal with it, sometimes it won't, and, and be perfectly honest, I, I can't tell you the exact details of, uh, of uh, what makes it angry at you. But uh, let's go ahead and, first of all, let's, let's import this using the Excel re, uh, XLS read function that I used in my other video, and I'll show you how you can modify that function to import this file. All right, everyone. Remember just a minute ago when I said it was, uh, MATLAB wasn't going to like the top of this file here? Well, that's partially true, but what, what I found and it came back to me when I tried to do this myself is it's actually the XLS read function that doesn't like this up here. Um, <clears throat> if, we, uh, if we hop over here, uh, I have uh, uh, modified the function I used in the import CSV file tutorial to read this file and basically we have uh, three variables here uh, and I use the the variables that are in the uh, in the file so second volt volt but I need to use different names here so there's a volt a and volt b and then I go ahead and I use the xls read function and and uh, and use the file name and and just like I did in that other video um, but uh, if I run this and I'll do that right now uh, just right there. Okay, so I, I showed you, I uh, told you all about this in the other video. You can go uh, watch the import CSV file if you want to find out more about that. But if I go ahead and run this, um, I'm going to get an error message. And I'll, that will pop up in a minute here. You see nothing plotted. And the error message I got was that the vectors must be the same length. Um, you can see in this, in this file that we've got more values in this column than we do in this column and XLS read function doesn't like that. Uh, so what I did was I just, I, since you can open these in a text editor, uh, you can trim the file and I just, you see, the, here is the before, this is the raw file, and then I just I just removed these, these extra rows here. 
Uh, they're not really going to tell us anything. We're not going to lose anything, but I just removed those, removed those. I still have my header row with my names. And then if I, if I, if I try to import this, uh, it should work. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I just up arrow key and uh, let's, I saved it as a different file name yet, but right file name in here. And uh, let's go ahead and hit enter here. And this should work now. Uh, I've noticed that the Excel read function actually takes a little bit longer than the way I'm going to show you here in a minute. Uh, so that might be another reason to uh, stay tuned. But uh, there you go. So there's the plot. Uh, we have two, it looks like two sinusoidal waveforms uh, from a, a scope plot. And uh, so there we were still able to use XLS read function with the CSV file, but we had to do a little bit of file trimming. Uh, let me show you a way to import that same file in a different way uh, and not have to trim the file. Okay, let's take a look at a, perhaps a better way of importing not only CSV files, but any ASCII type file. And uh, ASCII, ASCII type files uh, could be delimited by uh, commas like a CSV file, or it could be delimited by spaces or tabs. Uh, or, uh, or uh, a lot of other di different characters. And it, so it gives us some flexibility to import a lot of different files. And I've noticed it works uh, quite a bit faster than XLS uh, read function as well. So here we have uh, the original CSV file. I remember it had these, these four rows up here that, uh, that XLS read didn't like. Um, and maybe um, we don't want to have to open up this file every time to delete those rows. Um, we can do it with the, the DLM read function. Uh, so that's what we're going to use here. And I'm not going to create a function, uh, a MATLAB function. I'm just going to use, use a script. And uh, I'll, I've already done this and tested it, and uh, it should work. And I'll just walk you through what I'm doing here. So first of all, we're creating a variable called file name, and we're assigning, uh, we'll just copy and paste uh, the file name in there. And a good way to do that is just go find the, fi the file that you want to read in, right click on it, uh, hit rename, and then highlight it and copy, and, and then you can paste it into here. Uh, and then we define what the delimiter in the file is. And since it's a CSV file, the delimiter is a comma, and we put that between single quotes. Uh, if it was a space delimited file, we would just put a space there. Uh, if it's a tab delimited file, um, if you check the help uh, on the DLM read function, it'll tell you this. Uh, it's a slash, uh, it's a backslash T that you use for that. So if it's a tab delimited file, we would use uh, backslash T, for example. Uh, but uh, this is a comma delimited file, so we're going to use a comma there. Uh, bring us back up here. So here I'm going to create a, a, a name for my data, and unlike the XLS read func uh, function where we uh, we uh, import each column one at a time. Uh, in this, we're going to, to import the entire file all at once. Uh, so here we have, we're just going to give that data a name. So it's my scope underscore data. Remember, uh, MATLAB doesn't like spaces, so you can use an underscore between words. Um, and then it's a DLM read is the function we're going to use. And uh, if we come back over here to our help, you can see uh, the syntax for it. We need the file name, the delimiter, and the range. And that's, this is what we're going to use right here. Uh, all right. And oh, that, that, this is the one we're going to use right here. So we have, here's the name, we have DLM read, file name, delimiter, and this is the row and the column. Okay. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start on row five because remember row one through four we didn't like. Um, and so we're just going to start on row five and this is uh, and start on column zero. Okay. Uh, and so that that will bring it uh, create a, a matrix in uh, in MATLAB, and then we can access that uh, and assign each. Uh, each piece of data to a variable. So we create our second, 
volt A and volt B. And then this is the syntax for it. So what this is this going to do is it's going to get all of column one and all of column two and all of column three. And if we take a back, uh, look back at our data, uh, so this, uh, this one, uh, this right here is going to get all the data. Uh, actually, I think it's here and below. Okay. And, and that's for the entire few. Uh, so all of this data and these three columns of data will be assigned to this, this name here. Uh, this line goes and it gets just this column and assigns it to second. This one gets just the second column and assigns it to volt A. And this one gets just the third column and assigns it to volt B. Okay, and then we have our, our plotting uh, uh, code here. And so we're going to since we're going to, to plot uh, two different lines on the same plot, we'll actually we'll, we'll explicitly create a figure, use the hold on grid on grid minor to, to lay out the uh, uh, the grid, and then we plot each one separately. So it'll be plot second, so that will be our our x-axis then volt a will be the y-axis and we can give it a color and a line width here and maybe I'll do a video later more on on uh, figure formatting but but then we just go ahead and we we add the second line there's the second piece of data on another line here plot second so we want to use the same x-axis and just give it a different y-axis give it a different color same line width and then our our title and our X label and our Y label is the same as it was in the other video. Uh, so let's go just go ahead and run this and see what happens. I'll go over here. Oh, it, it it went away on me. Here it goes. There we go. And there you go. I plotted it. Uh, lo looks the same as it did as when we used the XLS read function. And uh, so there's the figure. Um, it looks just the same. Uh, let me print this over here so it's easier to get to. And uh, you can see this is the uh, uh, that's just the one line that we ran that script. And you can see just like I was saying, we have this uh, this matrix here of scope data, and then we have uh, variables that hold each co uh, uh, column of that scope data. We could double click on this, and you can see that there we have the three columns of data that came from the CSV file. Uh, let's just see what it looks like. Uh, hopefully you can make this out. Uh, but we got uh, 0 0.1287. 0 0.1287. Yeah, so it's right in here. That's good. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, so just to review, um, we can, uh, there are other ways of importing. Well, first of all, uh, CSV uh, XLS read function can be used with CSV file, uh, but you need to. It doesn't like the uh, uh, different lengths of data. So um, when you go to plot it, um, so if you're going to use XLS read, uh, you need to the file that you're using has to be formatted in a, in a certain way. You can use CSV files, but it has to be formatted a certain way. Uh, another way of doing it, uh, and it ran, runs a little bit faster, is use the DLM read function. And the DLM read function will, uh, will uh, uh, we can import all that data all at once, and then we can do whatever, whatever we want with it. If you like this video, please click like. It motivates me to make other videos just like it. If you want to find out when I post more videos, please subscribe. You can also read about uh, completed projects on our website spastic.net or spastic.com. On our website, we include details of how we did some of the projects that are on these videos and some of the source code that uh, you can use uh, yourself as much as you like. If you want to track progress of projects we have going on step by step, be sure to check out our pages on Twitter and on Facebook.